So every one of our submittals for every one of our products has this table, okay, which is a instantaneous delivery table. Now we have competitors who have tables that look very similar to this, which indicate the recovery rate of the equipment at various temperature rises. I don't like to think about our units in that way because our units don't have a recovery rate because we're not recovering a storage vessel. I like to think of this as a delivery rate table. So when you come to this table, basically what's done here is a simple calculation that we do on the sizing front. You indicate what the temperature rise you want for your equipment is. So you go from your groundwater temperature up to whatever your fixture temperature is going to be. And then we calculate what the maximum amount of flow rate you can put through the system and still achieve that temperature rises. So for example, this is an IN401. On an IN401 for a 70 degree rise in temperature, I can put 11 gallons per minute through the unit. What this doesn't mean is I have to put 11 GPM through the unit to get a 70 degree rise. That's not the same thing. It doesn't read both ways. I can put five gallons per minute through the unit and still achieve a 70 degree rise. I can put one gallon per minute through the unit and achieve a 70 degree rise. I can't put 12 GPM through the unit and achieve a 70 degree rise. Oftentimes this gets confusing because most systems use what's called forced flow to calculate this. So a boiler is gonna tell you, if you set your pump at 11 GPM, this is what you're gonna deliver. Our system doesn't operate that way. We don't want it to operate that way. We wanna see diverse demand over a period of time. And then all this is doing is, is a simple calculation. So actually we can do a calculation right now if we pull up uh, the calculator, which I hope you guys can all see here. Uh, we can recreate the values on this table. If I take uh, 399,000, uh, 999 B2 per hour, this would be a IN4 run one, right? That's that's my maximum firing rate. I divide that by 70 degrees and I divide that by 500. I'm getting 11, 11.4. And there's, you know, thermal efficiency is going to affect this a little bit. So I'm getting 11.4 instead of 11. That's where this comes from. Taking that same equation we use on the sizing front to calculate capacity, I'm just flipping it around. 